Hi, in this Unity tutorial, what I'm going to be going over is using a Unity feature called Sprite Shape. All right, so what Sprite Shape's power is, is to be able to take something like these simple images here, just three images, and make a whole level just with three images instead of having a whole bunch of images and tiles, etc. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is make sure first that I have the, um, the, the 2D sprite shape package installed for my new 2D project here. So I have it right here, the 2D package um, for sprite shape. But if you don't have that yet, when you create your 2D project, you have to go to Window, Package Manager, and first you could see either all the packages that you do have or you could show all packages period so um here's the 2d sprite shape which i have a check mark next to and it's installed but if it wasn't installed say like the 2d animation package i'd press install so if you go and you don't have a check mark here you could just press the install button and then give it a moment or two and the 2d package will install you know you have it installed if you have it right here. Okay, so now we know we have it installed and we wanna start by making our first sprite shape. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go here in my assets window and I'm gonna right click and say create sprite shape profile. There's three of them and I'm gonna start with the one called empty. So here's um, an empty profile. I'm just gonna give this name for land. It's gonna be like the land in my 2D game, the hills and everything. And um, first thing I do here in the inspector window is I have to create a range. So the way Sprite Shape works is basically you could say um, for any direction that you may be pointing, what sprite do you want to draw? So here at the top, I'm going to create one range. And from this angle to this angle, I could tell it to use a certain sprite. So if I'm on the top, I'm going to use this mossy looking grass sprite. It's a horrible drawing, but I know, but you know, it's going to work for me right now. Then if I'm on the sides over here, I could make another range. I just um, click and on this side, I am going to use a sprite called a uh, plank. And then I could move around and to this side, Let's see if I get that little white outline. Yep, the white outline there, click. And if, if I'm pointing toward this side, I want it to use a sprite. So I'm gonna add and say to use the plank as well. And then on the bottom, um, let me create a range over here. Click in the gray area. Now I got four ranges. On the bottom, I'm going to add a sprite and um, let's use the plank as well. Okay, so now I have a sprite shape where depending on which way it's pointing, it's going to draw a sprite. Um, so now I could take that land, I could drag it into the scene. And let me scale it down a little bit. Okay, and here you could see I have um, a sprite drawing for every shape in the way, but there's nothing in the middle. So for the middle, there is something called texture fill, right here, fill texture. And I kind of made these stones to be the middle. So I'm gonna put them there. And then you could see that it kind of draws the stones. They're a little bit messed up. So that's because I have to put the stones on repeat mode. So I'm gonna click now on the stone sprite. And from the wrap mode being clamp, I'm going to turn it to repeat and then say apply. And that looks a little better. All right. Now what happens if I go back here and I click on my sprite shape, I'm going to call this um, land. All right. And here in the inspector window, I click on edit spline. These dots show up for my sprite shape. And each of these dots I could move and then automatically the sprites would fill in for me. Um, in the in the window to fill in the drawing okay and you can see it's bending the angles of the sprites for me and everything so say if I was making this level here um, 
I could move the dots and make a box instead of making a sprite for each of these boxes, I automatically just move these dots and the sprites are drawn and filled in for me. And I could also click anywhere and add a new dot. And that new dot I could also move up and down. Okay. And just same thing, if the angle becomes too low, it switches and it uses the appropriate sprite to fill in that drawing. So I could basically make a level to run through using this method <clears throat> without having to have a separate drawing for each, each of these sprites at a separate angle. It just fills in. Um, so one thing you could say, how about if I wanted the grass to kind of be continuous and connected? So let me just save what I got right there, save my scene here and go and click on the grass sprite itself. And I can modify the grass sprite in the, um, in the sprite editor. So I click sprite editor. And there's these little green, um, there's a green outline box around my sprite. So right now it's drawing the sprite all the way to the edges. If I drag that in somewhat from the edges, this inside part will be my repeatable sprite. I say apply. And now you can see the grass is connected instead of having that separation space. But still at the edges, what do I have? I have the edge still drawn in there. But when the grass is connecting, it doesn't leave a gap. Okay, so I have um, the points that I had here in my land. If I go back to edit spline, I have these points. And the points right now, they're kind of like hard edges. They kind of just um, bend hard. I could make them bend smooth by using a different point mode. So this point right here is in the straight line mode. I could use this one tangent and now it kind of puts a curve and I could play around with that curve and wiggle it and bend it um, to be a smoother transition. Okay. This third mode, it just means that I could control each of these tangent dots individually if I wanted to individually from each other. Mm -hmm. So now I have this um, sprite shape here. Let me turn off the edit spline. And I want to add, say, something like a big letter O for Omar Vision. And I'm going to just make it a little bit more reasonably sized. And this big O is going to be in the game. And let me add some physics to the O, like a uh, rigid body 2D and also a collider. Um, what kind of collider should we add? We should add a, let's add a polygon collider to just outline the shape of the O. All right. And if I press play, then gravity should drop down the O and we want it to land on the land. But right now it doesn't. It kind of goes right behind the land. Um, that's another thing. We want the land to be back and the O to be in front. So let's just change the order and layer and increase the order and layer of the O and move it more to the front by increasing the number. Now if I press play, it should fall in front. Okay, but now we want it to fall and hit this um, sprite shape that we made called land. So if I click back on the land sprite shape, there's a collider that we could add to it. We got a physics 2D collider. We're going to have to add the edge collider. Okay. Now with the edge collider added, we can see that it's just a straight green line throughout everything. We want this to match the shape that we drew out. And when we added this edge collider component to the land over here in the sprite shape control, it added this collider um, section and it's called update collider. I could just check that. And now the collider is matching the outline shape of the, um, the land. Okay, so now if I press play, the O should drop and land on the land. Okay, so the only other thing I could think of is that this land, I wanted the collider to be like in the middle of the grass, not on the bottom of it. So we could control that. Um, make sure you select the land 
And then here in the collider um, section of the sprite shape control component, there's a thing called offset. So I could play around with the offset to increase or decrease the collider size. So if I increase it so that it's matching up kind of like to the middle of the grass, I could leave it like that. Okay, now the corners too, I could change the shape of them from square to round to sharp corners. So I want things to move smoothly between each other, so I'm going to change it to round round corners right there. And let's see, this um, spline shape that we made for the sprite shape, there's some other boxes here. Um, this here is open-ended because uh, if I click open-ended, then it's just like a path along the top. Okay, if I click, unclick open-ended, then it kind of seals it off as a polygonal shape with the fill on the inside and everything else. And what else do we have here? Well, basically, already what we have here, we have something that we could use for a game. Now, this was um, one shape that I added here. Now, there's nothing to say I could have other shapes that I make, but even that same shape, I could add it again. I could control the size, zoom it down, and I could have this one be, um, yeah, make sure it's in the background. So I'll say minus one to make sure it's in the background because it was there by default just picking that. And, you know, I could add some more depth here. So with this one, I turn on this, and I could make something else here. And maybe this one I don't interact with. It's just there for looks. But um, I could do all these things to basically oh, make a level with just three images, basically. I'm making an entire level instead of having to make a different image for everything. Okay, let's see if it comes down, maybe. And then there's a big old hill. Just something to see in the background. Mm -hmm. I just have some more levels. Now on this one, I could leave the collider off. And then when I move the O, when I move the O, this one doesn't have a collider, this one does. And let's call this land to land back, land in the background. And, um, you know, I could kind of make, kind of making a level here. All right. And I guess then I could always do another thing. I could always put a background image. Let me move this land back down a little bit. Um, move icon down. Not there. And I want move it over a little bit like that. Mm. I could put a background instead of it being blue. Um, wait, 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 let's move this guy down too. Cause I could see this little gap here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let me look at my bag of tricks and some stuff I did with my drawing tablet. I have this nice picture of a background. I could put that in. Okay. And I could take this background and put it there. And all I have to do is change the layer to go further back, like minus 10. Yeah, minus 10 to be in the back of the back. And then for big O, I guess I could add some controls here to move them back and forth. New script. Um, and component, new script. Just call this the player script and open it up. Okay, so here I could have a script that I'm adding to the um, the big O object to be able to move it left and right. So this is going to read from the horizontal input axis, and then it's going to apply force to the right direction of the horizontal input axis, a value of minus one to one times the force of 10. 
So over here we have a public. This is going to show in the inspector, so I could change the force without changing the script. And this will hold a pointer to the rigid body component of my big O guy. And then here I get a pointer to the rigid body component, so I could reference it right here. And then here I use it. So the only thing here I explain is the input get axis horizontal. Okay, I think it actually changed because I'm using Unity 2018.3. I just downloaded this. I think they moved the input manager. It's still going to be project settings. But um, right here I could pick the different setting types. And it shows in this window the input settings here. And the axes, there's one for horizontal. See, so this is the one I'm reading in the input for the script. I'm reading the horizontal. I just have to copy that name and paste it in my code. So it's the left and the right keys or the A and the D keys. And it's also the joystick X axis. So that's where I'm getting the input settings. All right. So then here, that's the reason I have the word horizontal that I'm using an in input. All right. And the values that come back from this are minus one to one. And that's a comment. Save. What's going on? Just play. And now I could move the um, O one way or press the other arrow to move the other way. And the O is kind of not a round shape. It's getting stuck there. Um, but that's basically how I could use um, the sprite shape tool to help me make a level for a 2D game.